recording this. Okay, so now I'm recording this. Share screen. Share screen. Okay. All right. So now I'm recording this, and um, as I say, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to talk about this week's project. I also want you guys to understand that you've got several projects in the works. Some of them you might feel that you have completed. Uh, fine, no problem. But some of you probably would want to work a little bit on some of these projects to maybe improve the grade somewhat. So let me talk very briefly about that and how that's going to work. A couple of things that make this course a little bit special. One of the things is that we are working with this new interface and we are running into all sorts of little trip ups with it. So because of these trip ups, I'm going to do everything I can to make it a little bit more friendly for you as far as getting the work in because I know it's probably been a chore to do. As a matter of fact, it's been a chore just for me to get you into a meeting room and, and to be able to be here with you. Hi, Jeffrey, and hi, Ryan. How are you guys? I'm glad to see that you made it in okay. Good. I just almost totally spaced that I'm supposed to be here. Oh, good. Okay. Well, you're here. That's the important thing, you know? I'm doing so, well. um, so, yeah, so we're all having trouble with the program. It's, it's uh, oh, and by the way, I've discovered uh, something, a new wrinkle. You probably noticed that in my recordings. Now, the recording that I did today, the pen tool recording, uh, you'll notice that my cursor is there, and you can follow my cursor. Uh, the reason that the cursor is there is because I actually recorded that in Camtasia. I didn't record that in this uh, right here, this program right here. So here's what I found out today, and I'm, I'm very upset about this. I'm told by the people in Zoom that Zoom is not capable at this time of recording my mouse. See my little see my little thing here I'm moving around? Yeah. All right. My little arrowhead here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not capable of recording the motions of that. So you're not seeing, and I didn't even realize this until today when I called them and they told me. I, I, I looked at the video. I was trying to record the video uh, uh, in, in here, you know, the pen tool video. I was trying to do it in here. And after I was all done, I realized there's no, there's no cursor. So I'm thinking to myself, now what am I doing wrong now, you know? So I called up Zoom, and it turns out I'm not doing anything wrong. You can see my cursor in the live session, but it doesn't show up in the recording. <laughs> So isn't that a fun thing? So you're not really going to be able to see my cursor. It's going to make it difficult. So what I did, because the pen tool exercise is so, it's so important to see what the cursor is doing, that I went into Camtasia and I recorded it in Camtasia so that at least you could see what my, my cursor is doing. That's very important for that exercise. So I thought I'd mention that to you, and I... Uh, I, I, from what I understand from Zoom, it's going to be a month before they have this issue resolved. So for the next month, we're going to have to basically just uh, deal with the, the pen tool not showing up. So isn't that a joy? Oh, joy, joy. Right. Lovely picking the teeth. So anyway, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to see what's going on unless you come to the live session, which you guys did. So everybody else is going to probably have a little bit of a difficulty because they're not going to be able to see me moving my cursor around. The cursor does not show up in the recording, and there isn't a thing that I can do about it. So I, I figured the very first thing I should do is at least warn you of that, okay? So... That's that. At any rate, as I was saying before, I sent you guys uh, this file right here, which is the, the CD template week 3ai Now, let me explain a little bit about this project, because I'm going to basically demonstrate some of it tonight for you. When you create something, when you create something like this CD cover, the proper program for you to create it in is a program called Adobe InDesign. Have any of you heard of Adobe InDesign? I have. You have? I have. 
have any of you looked at it, used it? Done? I've gotten a, just an introductory course in, in Design 103. Okay. I did last, uh, last mod as well. All right, so you know a tiny bit about it. Let me explain to you what's the difference between Adobe InDesign and Adobe uh, Illustrator. Both Adobe InDesign and Illustrator are essentially uh, vector programs. The major difference between InDesign and Illustrator, Illustrator is primarily used to create um, artwork. Oh, and please listen, everybody, uh, please be quiet, and, and, if, and if, if kids or family come around, mute your mic, because we hear every sound, and it really messes up the recording. I really would like to keep you all active, but it, be very careful to try to keep it quiet in your environment because it, everything shows up or everything you hear. So anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, Adobe InDesign is primarily a layout program. And when I say layout, if you're creating something like what we're going to be creating here, which is the outside front and back cover of a CD, you would really create that in Adobe InDesign. The assignment is calling for us to do it in Adobe Illustrator. Um, now, I'm not saying you can't use Adobe Illustrator to create a layout like this, because obviously you can, and we are going to. I'm just saying it would not, I would not be a good instructor if I didn't tell you, though, that when you create layouts for things like business cards, brochures, flyers, advertisements, CD covers, posters, booklets, you really should be using Adobe InDesign to do that. This is special because tonight what we're trying to do in this class is learn about Adobe Illustrator. So I'm kind of giving you a little bit of leeway with that here, but it's very important that you understand that difference. Adobe Illustrator is an artwork producing program. Adobe InDesign is a layout program, okay? All right, that being said, back to CD template week one, or I'm sorry, week three dot AI. So here is, and your assignment, just so that you know, is you're gonna create the outside front and back cover for a jazz uh, company, a company that does jazz um, music, records jazz and sells jazz music. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, this file here, I'm going to go view fit, zoom out. Let me zoom out this out a little bit so you can yeah. see the whole thing. Okay. I created this for you so that it's more or less perfect and you have the ability then to uh, work on this thing as uh, in a correct way. Now, here's the thing. Uh, if you were doing this, what you would probably want to do is you would probably want to contact your printer to see whether your printer has a template like this. And if the printer has a template like this, you would then ask the printer to let you use that template so that you actually don't have to create this template. Creating this template isn't so difficult. I probably will show you how to do it. Uh, in a minute, just so that you know how I did this, but so that you actually don't have to do it, I did it and I supplied it to you, and I supplied it the right way. The template that they had, in my opinion, was not even a correct template because it had these things laid out on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. Here, what I've done is I've created two, and remember, we have the ability to do different artboards. So what we, what I've done here is I've created two separate artboards. Uh, and this is actually incorrect because you're not doing an inside spread. You're doing two outside front and back covers. So I'm going to show you how, well, this is not even that important because it's just to show you how this thing works. Okay. Let me explain what's going on with this. So basically what you have is you have your CD booklet and the CD booklet is the size of the CD that, that you need to make. I don't remember the exact size of it right now. Um, I might be able to find out by going window. Let me just see here. Let me go to artboards. Yeah, and let me go to the artboard options. And the artboard options says that the, okay, so the width of the artboard, the width of the artboard is 9.5 inches. So it's 9.5 inches wide by 4.8 inches high, okay? So that's the size of the artboard. I'm going to leave this out because maybe we'll use it in a little bit. Put it up in here. 
Okay. Now, let me click on the layers palette, and you'll notice that I got three different layers here. Uh, one layer is called call outs, one layer is called margin, which is locked, and one is called layout. And the layout is not locked because the layout is which is what I'm going to actually build the art for my front and back cover. Okay. Uh, but let me point out to you that when you create this front and back cover, the front actually appears on the right side and the back uh, appears on the left side. The reason that is, is it folds right here and it inserts into the, the CD box at that you're I'm assuming it's a box or clamshell or however it's delivered. And uh, it opens from, it opens from uh, right to left. So that means that the front has to be on the right in order for this to open properly. So does that make sense to you? The height was, I forget, I'll find out again. I think 4.5, let's see, 4.8. Okay, 4.8. So that was the height. But you see what I'm telling you is that you don't really have to worry about that because this is the template I sent you and you're going to use that template. Okay, so let me explain some of the elements that you see here. First of all, you see that I have crop marks out here. Can you see the crop marks? Yes. What these crop marks do is they indicate where the actual printed piece is going to cut. So it's going to cut here to here, and it's going to cut here to here. Then it's going to cut here to here and here to here. Trim, trim it down to that white area, okay? So that's the first thing. Notice that I have in the middle here a dashed line. Can you see the dashed line? I can. Okay. So the reason the dashed line is there instead of a, a straight line is this is a cut line. This is a score line or a fold line. So a printer would look at this and say, okay, I know I'm going to cut it there. I know I'm going to fold it there. That's the point. And that's something that you need to be aware of. It's very easy to make this by just going up into the uh, stroke palette and choosing dash lines and setting a couple of numbers in this and maybe if I get a chance I'll show you. So this is for your fold mark, this is for your score mark. Now you notice these two red lines out here, I'm going to get my layers palette out and I'm going to uh, click on the margins and I'm going to delete this and I'm going to delete this because I think I got too, 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 too many. Yeah, okay. Uh, see the red lines I got right there? Those yeah. red lines are indicating a bleed. Have you ever heard of the term bleed? Do you know what a bleed is? you know what it means? Isn't that where the color um, overlaps the edges? So um... It runs off the page. It runs past the trim line so that if it, let's say, for instance, the front panel was going to be a solid black that bled here and here and here, you would basically create a box that would run all the way to that red line here, here, and here. And if you wanted to stop at the fold, it would stop at the fold. You're actually going to see me create a, um, a background color of black for, for one of my creations uh, in a few minutes. Okay? So that's what the bleed line represents. Now, these blue lines, you see I got these blue guides in here? Those blue guides are about a, an eighth of an inch in. What they, are call, what, they are, what they are is they're margins. They are going to establish an area that I do not want to go beyond with, with my, uh, with my uh, text primarily. So that's why I got them. I don't want to go any further than that blue line here, here, or here with my text. Matter of fact, I don't even want to go to that line. I want to go in a little bit. But I don't want to go in this area with my text unless I'm doing something in, wh in which a piece of text is going to bleed off the side, which sometimes you might do. So that's what that is. Now this line here indicates where the center line is or the fold is. So now I can show you my front panel and my back panel, okay? That is basically what those elements are doing for me. So does that make sense? Yep. Any questions about it at all? Nope. All I don't right. have any. All right. Now here's the deal. You'll be okay just as long as you use my guides or uh, use my uh, template because, again, you don't, have, you don't want to have to create this. But um, maybe what I'll do is very quickly, I'll show, oh, oh, by the way, I'm going to hide the callouts. So basically now I've hidden the callouts. 
and I'm going to lock my margins, okay? And I'm going to click on the layout layer. Now, I'm all ready to actually do my work. This is, if when you look at my uh, template that I send you, you should have these same layers in here. And you want to hide your call out just by toggling the visibility. And you want to make sure that the margins are showing and your layout is showing. And then you want to lock that layer and lock that layer and not lock that layer, but select that layer. And it should look just like that. And if you got it looking like that, you're ready to do your work, okay? Okay. All right. So now we're ready to go. Uh, I'm going to come in. I'm going to open. I'm going to go file open. I'm going to open my uh, final CD template week three, and let's open it up. Um, I lost one of my images. Damn. I, you know what? I totally forgot to fix this this afternoon. Ugh, jeez. I'm going to ignore it, and I'll maybe... I'll maybe repair it later. All right, so let me go view, zoom out. Okay, so here are my two creations. Uh, this one is missing an image, so I'm going to have to fix that. But this is my creations. This is the two that I created. This is the front. That's the back. This is the back of the second one. That's the front. Now, notice that one of the things that I sent you was this element right here, which is the barcode. The barcode must appear on both of these. Very important that you find a way to put the barcode into both of them. And usually the barcode will go on the back panel. The reason that the barcode is there, the barcode is specially creative to make it easy for the customer who purchases this to uh, put a, a price into it to sell it in their stores. So you need to print the barcode in here. Does everybody understand that? That's why I sent it to you. And you all should have that barcode. Okay? Okay. So we understand what that's all about. All right. I do. All right. So anyway, these are what these are what you're doing. You're going to be creating two of these things. Okay? And if you fold, the, fold these things in half, you'd see that is the front and you'd see that is the back. You'd see this is the front, but there's a picture missing here. So I'm going to have to correct that. That's the first thing I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to drop this down for a minute, and I'm going to jump out of here. I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to come in here, and I have in here, let's see where I put them. Give me a second to find them. Uh, right, well, let me go to my mail, and let me click on this, and let's go to uh, links. There we go. Okay, so here are my links, and I have two links. Come on. All right. Free jazz graphics. I'm going to click on that. Okay, and then I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and I'm going to click on the free uh, photos. Okay, so now I have my graphics and my photos. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, one of the things that you can do, everybody still hear me okay? I can hear you. Good. All right, I'm going to close this out right now, because I don't need it this second, and I'm going to close that out right now. Okay, notice that I got this piece of artwork here. This was the piece of artwork that I used for my project, and I'm, it's missing. So I'm going to see whether I can get this piece of artwork again. So I'm going to open this up, see if it'll open for me. Give me a second. And, and it's smaller here. Okay, so let me go back, and I guess I'm going to have to take it from here. All right, hold on. Okay, let me click on There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to come in here, and I am going to use my snippet to come in, and I'm going to grab this piece of art just like that. There we go. And I'm going to go File, Save As, and I'm going to call it Jazz, J-A-Z-Z. -Z. Save it to the desktop. Hit Save. Okay. So there I have that saved. Now, I'm going to get back to this in a minute. I'll, I'll get back to this in a second. But just so I can kind of get myself resolved here, there's my jazz image. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Adobe Photoshop. And give me a second to do this. Are you guys familiar with Adobe Photoshop at all? Have you done any work with it yet? Yeah. Yeah? Somewhat familiar? I've only messed around with it a little bit. 
okay, well, I'm going to do this very slowly and I'm not going to do a whole lot here. And you only have to do this with one image. And you might get lucky and you might not have to do this at all because the image might be big enough. It turns out that this image is not, so I'm going to have to modify it slightly. Uh, so let me have a second. All right, so here's Adobe Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop is what we use to modify bitmaps. So I'm clicking and I'm dragging this into Photoshop to open it up. And there it is. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of that red line. I don't want that red line. So I'm going to drag and I'm going to select just inside that red line, just like that. And I did that using the marquee tool right there. You see the little dancing ants, the little marquee? And I'm going to go image crop. And I've just cropped that image. Watch when I deselect it. Select, deselect. See, now I got a nice clean edge on that photo. This was the photo that I was using. I'm going to now take a look at that photo and see how big it is. I'm going to go to image, image size. And it's 96 pixels. And it's 3 by 7, 4. So I need this thing to be uh, 4.8. So I'm going to come in here and type 4.8. And I'm going to change the resolution to 180. And I'm going to change the way that I... Uh, 180. Oh, I see. Uh, 180 uh, pixels per inch. Let's see. Resolution 180. Yeah, that's good. And then I'm going to come in here and see where it says bicubic smoother, best for enlargement. See that? I'm going to make this thing slightly bigger, which I shouldn't be doing, but I'm going to do it for this exercise. And I'm going to use bicubic smoother, best for enlargement. See? Bicubic smoother, best for enlargement. I've made it 4.8 high because that's what I. that's how big I know it is and a resolution of 180. It is not a high resolution, but it's bi it's good enough for our purposes since this is a demonstration. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now it came up bigger. I'm gonna go view actual pixels and view bit on screen. And let's zoom it out, view zoom out. Okay, so there it is, there's the image. It's not a real good image, it's not a real clean image, but it's good enough for our purposes, okay? So really what I did and uh, let me go file save and I'm saving it to the maximum file size and hit OK and that's all I'm going to do with this so do you have any questions about what I did with this is anything you want to ask me right now while I'm here do it now no I think I'm good what I did essentially was I cleaned up I cleaned up the edge on my um, my snip I snipped it Cleaned up the edge, and I uh, went up. I went in here, and I adjust it. I adjusted its size somewhat. All right, making it so that it'll probably work a little bit better in my composition. That's really all that I did with this. Not a big deal. So I'm going to close this out, and there is my jazz image right there, which we're going to go back to and work on. Okay, so let me go back to this for a second. I sent these links to you. One of the links is for free jazz photos, and if you go and take a look at these. You're going to find a ton. There's a nice shot of jazz, a guy playing jazz. There's all kinds of interesting images that you could look at and play with. I want you to pick one of them. I don't want you to pick more than one. But you could, you could pick one per um, CD. So you can actually pick two. But pick one and then one for the other if you want. No more. Okay? And then you're going to use them. In your composition I'm going to show you how I used mine but I'm just I'm scrolling slowly down here to let you see that there's like a bunch of pictures that you can see there's a picture that I used so you'll come in here and you'll find a picture or two that you like and don't be afraid if it's black and white a lot of these are black and white nothing wrong with that that's okay you know um, there's ways of dealing with that if you want to but anyway so there's there's your images now the other thing is there are free jazz graphics so basically what I did was I came in here and I picked a couple of graphics. Uh, these graphics, you can use as many of them as you want in, in, your, in your composition. I used like, I think two. And I'll show you the ones, I already got them in there, and I'll even show you how to convert them. That's one of the things that I'm gonna show you tonight. So those two links I sent you to, come in here and pick a couple of nice jazz graphics and then come into the photos and pick one or two of the really nice photos to use in your composition. So you all kind of understand that? You can, you can do this a number of ways. Let's see what happens with this. See, now I got this here, 
I can click on this guy. Let's see where he goes. He goes to there. Now, I might be able to, let's see if I can do this. I might be able to, on my computer, click and drag and drop that right to my desktop. And it's not letting me do that. Okay. Not letting me do that. So I can't do that with this. But probably on your computer, uh, you will have something like a, a snipping tool. You guys what know what a snipping tool is? Can you see over here? I got that snipping tool. There should be a little program on your computer where you could go in and you could select this and it should pop up something like this and allow you to drag to select part of the image, see? And then file, save as, and I'm gonna call it uh, saxophone, sax, and on the desktop, save, okay? And then you, you basically have my, there's my saxophone and there's my jazz. So now I have two. So does everybody kind of understand that? You should take a look to see whether you could find a snipping tool or something similar to that on your computer. And if you do, you can use that to snip, snip this um, uh, image out. Okay. If you can't do that, if you're having trouble doing that, um, I will put a couple of images. I will go and grab a couple of images and put them into a um, uh, an announcement tomorrow, so that you can use a couple of images that I have. Is that okay? Yeah. Yep. All right. So basically, you're going to do the same thing. Let me go back to the free graphics. You're going to come back here. Let's take a look at Ray Charles. So you're going to come back here, and you're going to take a look at Ray Charles and see what Ray Charles looks like. And there's Ray Charles. And if you click on it, you might be able to make it a little bit bigger. Come on. Uh, yeah, there he is. See, he's nice and big, actually. So maybe, if you're lucky, you can click and you can drag him to the desktop. See, look, it's working. Boom. Look, there he is. All right, you see how I clicked and dragged Ray Charles to my desktop? That's cool. Yeah, so I want you to try to do that and see whether your computer will allow you to do that like I was just able to do that. So now I have a graphic that I could potentially use on my, uh, on my design. And you'll see in a minute when I actually go to uh, work on mine, you'll see some images that I did exactly this to, and that's how I got them, all right? So this is how you can get them. And again, if you have any problem, what I will do is I will make sure that I put a, another zip file into uh, either an email to you or I will put it into an announcement. Uh, if you don't get an email from me, go look in the announcements and you'll see that there'll be a folder. And in that folder will be some images that I've grabbed for you and you could possibly use those images, okay? So one way or the other, we'll get you some images. All right, so now let's get back to this. I have this image right over here, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to place this into my image. There. So there is my, there is my smoky room, uh, my people in my smoky room, and you'll see that it's still not quite big enough. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to use the free transform tool to enlarge this. There we go. So now I have it big enough. And I'm going to move it over to about here. I think it's actually not good in the position that it's in. So what I'm going to do is, watch this. I'm going to move it over by, it's selected. I'm going to move it over by hitting the right arrow key. And I'm going to move it over until I get a lot more of my saxophone guy in my, something like that. See, you see where the, the actual thing cuts off here? I want him not to be so close to that edge. So I'm actually moving this over quite a bit. That's probably pretty good. But now the problem is you see how this falls into this panel. I don't want that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go edit cut. And I have this I have this box here. Do you see this box? See that little transparent box right there? Yep. That transparent box, let me adjust the size of it. That transparent box goes to the bleed line here. It goes to the bleed line here. It goes to the bleed line here. And it stops right on the score. And, and with it selected, I'm going to go edit, paste, and back. 
Okay, so now what I did was I paste that image behind that box. You see it? And actually, that box is a little bit wide over here, so I'm going to bring it into there. Okay, so there is my there is my uh, image, and there is my box. What this box represents, and and this box is nothing more than a rectangle. Let me actually get rid of this thing. Uh, I'm not going to get rid of it. I'll just move it over and show you. It's re it's just a rectangle. Look, see, you can't even see it. It's a rectangle though. Control Z to put it back. It's a rectangle. And the rectangle, basically, what it does is it's going to act as a mask. I'm going to mask this. So I'm going to make sure I get it where I want it, which is about like that. Okay, so I've, I've got my rectangle. I'm going to come over here, hold down the shift key, and I'm going to select the, uh, the background image, the man, the blues singer, and my rectangle. Can you see I have them both selected? Yeah. All right. Is this somewhat clear to you? Is it, is, am I throwing anybody with this? How, how did you get both of them selected? I went over and I clicked on the box first. Okay. And then I knew that the picture ran over to here. So I held down the shift key and clicked right there. Whoop, right there. Uh, let me do it better. Click here to click. That's the actual image. And then hold down the shift key and click here. And I got the box. So I actually shift okay. click to select both those two objects. Okay? Okay. All right. I'm going to do what's called a clipping mask. And what a clipping mask does is it essentially creates an area where the image will show and the area outside the, uh, the box, it will not show. So you see this is the box right here. And it's going to show there. But you see the arm here? That's going to disappear. The clipping mask is going to hide that. So that's why I need this box to be in front of the image, and I need it to be selected along with the image. Does that make sense? I you think th so. Okay. I'm going to go to the object menu. I'm going to go down the clipping mask, and it's make, but watch the arm. Watch the arm outside the clipping box when I let go of this. You ready? Here we go. Boom. Oh, great. What's wrong with it now? Hold on. Why can't it be a clipping mask? Object, range, bring the front. That is in front. Let's try it again. You know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to get rid of that box. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to create another box, because I think it's the box. I think that's the problem. Let me come in here and click and create another box. OK, so there is the box that I just created. I'm going to go Edit Cut. And I'm going to select this. And I'm going to go Edit paste in front. So now I have the box paste right, right in front of that picture and I should be able to shift click uh, select both of them and now if I go object clipping mask make uh, it worked. You see what happened? See outside yeah. the box? You see the arm went away? <clears throat> does it make sense at all what I did? Yep. It does? Anybody yeah. have any questions? No. No? I'm good. Okay, great. All right. So then let's go back to – I. that's what was missing, by the way. And the reason I did this was because I just wanted to show you that. I wanted to get this image back in here so that you could see what the actual uh, cover looks like. We're going to actually work on this. So I'm going back to my template. Okay. So now if you notice, both of my, both of my designs have a black background. Okay? That's just the way I decided to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to recreate something very similar to this. So you will see me jump back and forth on both of these things a number of times. Okay. So I'm going to go to my template and I'm going to start off by coming in here and I'm going to click default black and white. And I'm going, I'm going to swap this. I want a black fill and I want no stroke. Okay. So I have a black fill, no stroke. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to apply black to both of the backgrounds here. So I'm going to come over and get the rectangle tool right here, and I'm going to come up to my bleed area. The black is going to bleed all four ways around my piece. So it's going to come all the way out like that. And then I'm going to go edit, copy, edit, paste in place. And I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'm going to right arrow the copy 
over onto my second piece. Almost there. There we go. So now I have a black background for both of my pieces. Real simple. Okay? I don't know what that line is there. What is that line? Oh, I know what it is. It's just showing me that it's one selected and the other's not. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, there is my background. Okay? There's my background. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of these graphics and how I did these graphics. So I'm going to go into the file menu and I'm going to go open. And I'm going to go into week three elements. No, that's what I sent you. Extras. Here we go. Extras. And let's see what we got in here. Nope, that's not right. Uh, jazz. That what is jazz. I'm trying to remember what that is. Let's see. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah, that's not right. Okay, well, yeah, this is something that I want to show you anyway. So, see the word jazz here? If you come back and take a look at my, my CD, you see the word jazz here? That's what this is. And what I wanted to show you was how I created this. I started off by just taking a pen and, and drawing this word jazz because I wanted this kind of a look. So, I started off by drawing it. It didn't come out very good. It kind of looks a little bit on the sloppy side. But what it does is it gives me something that I can use to trace. So this is the reason I want to show this is because one of the things that we're doing this week is we're working on uh, working with the pen tool and tracing things. So I just want to show you another way that you could creatively use the pen tool to create a piece of art. So I'm going to come up here and I'll look at the layers. And I got my layer here. This is my trace layer, T-R-A-C-E, trace layer. And I'm going to create another layer, and this is going to be my live layer, L-I-V-E, live layer, all right? And I'm going to lock the trace layer. So I, I no longer can touch or move or do anything with that word jazz. It's locked down. I'm going to get the pen tool. Remember what I told you, that there's a tear off, and you can bring this over now, and there's your pen tool. So what I'm going to do now, essentially, is I'm going to try to trace this off as best I can, all right? So I'm going to start by coming over here. Make sure that you're on the live layer. And I'm going to come over here. Oh, by the way, make sure that you have no fill and a black stroke. Okay? So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to start off by doing a click right there. And then I'm going to come down to about, let's say, right about here. And I'm going to click, hold, and I'm going to drag to create a line that does just about like that. Then I'm going to come over and I'm going to click here and then I'm going to move over to oh, let's say right about here. Let's try right about there. And I'm going to click and drag to create the second part of my letter jazz. And I'm going to click here again and I'm going to come up to about here and I'm going to come out and drag this so that I can create more of the letter about like that, and click here. Then I'm going to come all the way over to here, click, and I'm going to try to do something that sort of finishes that letter off kind of nicely. Then I'm going to click, and I'm going to come over to about here, and I'm going to drag, and I'm going to create the top part of my letter A. Probably that's pretty good. Click like that, okay? Come around to about, let's try about there. And I'm just building the word jazz with my pen. And then I'm going to come up to this. And I'm going to create a nice A shape. Click like that. And then I'm going to come back to about here. Click and drag to do an A. I've got to be careful doing this one. This is one of the harder ones. Click here. And then come up and finish my J-A. And there we have my JA. So can you see how I've actually drawn this and I've actually made it look a little bit cleaner than I did there? That's the actual point. All right. So I then did the same things, same thing with the letter Z and Z. I'm not going to bother doing it. I think you get the general idea, right? So that basically what I'm doing is I'm coming in here with my pen tool and I'm finding the place where this properly properly fits and I'm creating this 
logo type the word jazz. Click and then come down to here and click and then click again and then come back over here and create the letter jazz. So there's J-A-Z and I would continue doing that with the jazz. All right. And then I'm going to hide that layer. In the end, what I would do is hide that layer. Okay. Select the, the words jazz and come in here and I would probably do something like maybe put a six point stroke on it. So now you see I've created some nice big lettering here. You see that? Yep. So there's a whole, and by the way, do you notice that the end caps are cut off? There's another thing that you could do. Select that, go to window, and go to uh, stroke. Where, where is it? Stroke. And see where we have the caps and the corner miter? The corner miter. Oh, and by the way, the uh, caps and the corner miter are in your assessment this week. So what we're doing with this is I'm going to apply an end cap. Let me show you what that looks like. Take a look at those. Now I'm going to come in here. Watch when I click on this is set to butt cap. See it? It butts up to the actual anchor point. Watch this. You see what it did? It rounded it off. Mm -hmm. And the miter limit, I'm going to bring the miter limit down to three. Let's see if that fixes it. That's ah, not. And that's something. Let's try 20. Yeah, that's too much. Let's try 12. Uh, yeah, see, it's it's still not giving me what I want here. Darn. Try 16. Yeah, it's again too much. Let's try uh, 14. Yeah, I'm stuck. It's kind of giving me that Z. It's it's doing what I want it to do, but not exactly. So I'm going to probably uh, remove it what uh, altogether. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, by changing the corner my, uh, the corner to a round joint, it corrected it. Okay, so let's view this. Let's take a look. Fit artboard and window. And there's my letters jazz. Starting to look okay. A couple of the little points aren't really that good. I'm gonna, I would have to come in and I'd have to play with them a little bit. But let me tell you, actually playing with this is not that difficult as you might think. I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to come over here and click on that. And I'm going to take this is one of my control handles. And I'm just going to drag that control handle out a bit. And that's too far. Bring it back. That's better. Well, not quite either. That's probably a little bit better. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, what do I want to do with this thing? Maybe just out a bit. Nope. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm not happy with what that's doing there. So maybe it's another, maybe it's this one. Let's try that one. I'm trying to make this thing look a little bit better. Maybe that's what I want to do is just drag this back a bit. Yeah, that, that's it. That's it. It's a little bit better. Okay. So basically I can come in here now and I can make this thing, I can make it a little bit bigger if I want or a little bit smaller. I think the bigger is better. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how I created that nice little logo. OK. And there's another one here that needs work. So you see, it's the kind of thing that you'll have to come in and you'll have to fool with. But I mean, if you look at it, what we started off with was we started off with this trace image, which looks pretty bad. Right. And then by a little bit of work in, in Illustrator, I can actually create what looks like a pretty nice logo. And in fact, let me show you something. I'm going to close this. Uh, save changes. No, I'm gonna open another one up. File open, and let me show you something else. Uh, let's see here. Where are you at? Uh, three. Jazz cover. I think it's on Jazz cover. It is open. Okay, there it is. So here's what I want to show you. This is the actual logo after I did it. See the the logo. This is the actual logo after I did it. Well. I did it properly. So that's what it really can look like if you do a good job with it. Okay? So you get a you get a pretty nice looking logo effect by hand. It's it's a creating a piece of hand. How I did that was I basically drew the word jazz uh, by hand and then I scanned that that sketch into my computer, brought it into Illustrator and used the pen tool 
to literally draw over the letters to create this. Okay? So do you guys think that you understand what I was trying to show you with this? And can you see why it, it relates? It relates because, again, we're working with the pen tool, and it's showing, you, it's showing you how you can use the pen tool to trace something to get an, an interesting effect. Now, I, I thought maybe you'd be interested in seeing this. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to go up to the effect menu, and I'm going to go and show you something really incredible. I'm going to show you to extrude and bevel this. So basically what I'm going to do is click on the preview and you know what let me cancel this because I think actually to do this I need it to be white and I need the black to be off of it. I need it to be white. I think that's probably a little bit better. So I've got this letter, the, the letters in white. I'm going to go to the effect, 3D, extrude and bevel. Now this is very this is very advanced but it's something that I just want you to look at because you'll get into this later on. But see this little cursor here? I can move this icon around and I can change the position of the, uh, the presentation of my letters. Look at that. You see how I've created? I'm going to hit OK. And look at that. I've actually now created this incredibly nice three-dimensional effect very quick and very easily for that letters. That is really, if you go back and look at my CD template, let's see, final, that is actually... Like that's actually how I created this. So I'm showing you what I did to create this. Then what I did was I went into the window menu and I came down to, um, where we go here? Graphic styles. Okay. And actually, I'll show you something quite interesting. Come back to the final. If I click on this jazz, uh, I have to double click to get in it. Let me see if I, there it is. I got it selected. I'm going to go into the window menu and I'm going to come down and find the appearance palette. And take a look. I have a stroke and a stroke on that. Okay, so where's the effect? It doesn't really show you the effect. Let's see. I think that's the effect. Neon blue. Let's let me go into my jazz cover and let me find the neon blue because I think it's 3D effect neon blue. That is it. Uh, it's not exactly it, but that's close to it. Look at the effect that I got on this. So if you put something black behind this, you'll see it almost looks like a near neon. Uh, I'm going to just make this default black and white. Give me a second to do this. And I'm going to go object, arrange, send to back. Look at that. Oh, that is awesome. Isn't that, in, isn't that insane? And, yeah, and yeah. basically, just so that you know, all right, uh, let me go back and show you my appearance palette. Window appearance, check this out. Okay, so here's my appearance palette. I am going to select the word jazz, and you can see that there it, say, it says fill and stroke. I'm going to remove these, okay, and I'm going to remove that, and it is now back to where I started. Now, with this open, because the appearance palette tells you everything that you do, and I'm going to go through this and show you this one more time because it's not that difficult to do. And I want you to get the idea. So after you create your words, and you could do this with regular type. You can just go in and you could set up regular type and you could do the same thing. Maybe I should do that. I'll just type in jazz, J-A-Z-Z. -Z. And I'm going to select it and I'm going to make it white. And I'll show you it in regular type in a minute. All right, so there's my word jazz. I'm just going to sit that over here to the side for a minute, and we'll get to that in a second, right? Yeah, no, it's the wrong way. That's what we want. There we go. Okay, so there's my word jazz. Let's do, go back to this, though. So essentially, what I'm going to do, I got it selected. I'm going to go to Effect, and I'm going to come into 3D, Extrude and Bevel. That's the one you're looking for. Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel. And you don't have to do much more than just take your little device here and position the device the way you want it to look. Something like that probably is pretty good. Okay? Again, you could do it all kinds of different ways. You know what I mean? And look, you could preview it. See? You can make it look like that. Or you could move it up like that. Preview it that way. That looks kind of good. Or bring it up a little bit. See, so you can even do it on the fly. I like that. 
I might leave it like that. Let me move it over just a bit, like that. And up a bit. Boy, this thing's sticky. There, that's probably pretty good. Let's try that. Yeah, I like it. So I'm going to hit OK. So that's the first thing. Get your text to, to look the way you want it to look, OK? And notice that when you do this and you click on it, it shows you, look, in your appearance palette, 3D extrude and bevel. So if I wanted to go back and if I wanted to play with this any further, with the appearance palette open, and remember the appearance palette is up here, window, appearance, hello, right there. All I need to do is double click on that and it brings me back in here and I can move this thing and then hit OK and it live updates that. Then, uh, okay. yeah, it's really awesome, it's incredible. Now I'm gonna come over here and click on this and there I have my full uh, 3D effect. Isn't that great? That is so cool. And if you want, you can come in here. Let's see. What we, I think if I click on this, I can come in here. I don't have any colors, unfortunately. But if I had colors in here, I could change this color. I could make it glow a different color. But actually, that's the color that I was using in this anyway. Okay, I wanted it to kind of look like neon. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you about that. Now, you can do this with regular text. So if you don't want to do the drawing thing that I did here, because it's a lot of work to do that, what you can do is you come in here and you can take your text and you can make your text, any text that you want. I'm going to bring that text up there. And I'm going to go window and I'm going to come down to type character. And I'm going to use my uh, tracking. This is another thing, kerning and tracking. Kerning is the space between two letters. Watch. I'm going to open it up. You see that? That's kerning. Kerning. I'm telling you this for a reason. It's in your assessment and tracking. Here is your tracking. Tracking, you select all the letters, and then you come in here, click on the tracking, and track it out. That's tracking. Okay, so tracking is for all the letters. Kerning is for letter pairs. Okay, so you got that. That's part of your assessment. Why I'm doing it, move this out of the way. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing with just the words jazz. So I'm going to go up to the effect menu, to 3D, and then I'm going to hit extrude and bevel again. And it'll open up the extrude and bevel. I'm going to hit preview. Look at that. There you go, right? And then I'm going to just play with this icon, and I'm going to get this thing to do what I want it to do. I don't know what I want to do with it, but I'm going to find it doing something interesting if it kills me. That's kind of cool. And then like that. Okay, I like that. I'm going to go with that for this. You get the idea, though? This is really very simple, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Hit OK. And then the graphic styles, window, graphic styles. Where are you? Right there. Window, graphic styles. There's a bunch of them in here. Okay, there's this one, that one. Some of these do not look real good. Uh, some of them work. Some of them don't. This one. That's kind of cool. That's cool. Yep. So, again, come in and play with this a little bit and see what are in here. Look at that. I like that, too. Yeah, that <laughs> I do like this one. I really like that one. I like the neon effect. So there you go. That will give you something that you can use to play with to make some of your text look really snappy. Okay? Now, is that all the graphics they have, or do they have more? What do you mean, all the graph? Oh, the styles? Yeah. No. They In here... What you can do is you can come down here to Open Graphic Style Library, and there's a bunch of them. Ooh. <laughs> Lots. So if you really want to go in and play around, there you are. Go in and play around. And if you want to, if you want to, uh, I'm going to close it out for now. But if you want to, you can come in here, watch this, and you can take this. I think it's this one. Yeah. And you can see, you can click, this is the appearance palette. What I like about the appearance palette, just so that you know, is the appearance palette lets me look at everything that I did to whatever selected object I have. In this case, the word jazz. So if I want, I can come in here, I can apply that. I can hide the 3D, look, see? So I can remove the 3D bevel and emboss, and I can just have this effect on top of regular old, old text. Or I can remove it, and I basically am just showing the, the outline of the lettering. I can bring it back, bring it back. 
And if I want to come in here and adjust anything, I'm going to adjust the 3D bevel. I can come in here and I can move my cursor to another position and hit preview, see what it looks like. If I want to do something like this, I can do it right on the fly and hit OK, and the change has been made. So really great. And again, this is, this is something that you can use very easily to dress up your, your, um, your template. Okay? I have a question. What? Go ahead. Okay, so when you were actually making your, when you were drawing, the, um, using your pen tool to trace uh, your drawing of, j of jazz. Yep. Do you have to connect every letter, or do you, um, once you're done, do you have to go back and individually select each letter and then group them? Um, let me show you. No, no, what I did, no, what I did essentially was I, uh, let me go in here and let me remove all this. Uh, let's go to the appearance palette. It is, uh, yeah, let me hide that and let me hide that. Okay, so this is, uh, those two are connected. The A and the J are connected. That is not connected. That is not connected. What I did do was I went into my Pathfinder palette, I believe. Let me see if I'm right. Object, ungroup. Nope, I'm wrong. I just grouped them. So I'm going to select that J and A. Notice that it's one piece, so it selects as one piece. And then I'm going to hold down the Shift key, select that. Hold down the Shift key and select the rest of it. So now I got all the three different letters selected. Object, group. And I've grouped them back together, and now I have one piece that I can go in and do the same thing to. Um, it is not live text. It is something that I created from a sketch that I made. So if you know how to do any hand sketching at all, uh, and you're going to go next week, I believe, next week the assignment will be that you're going to put together a, uh, a superhero and it is going to require you to scan the image in and then draw or, or use the auto trace to uh, create your superhero. And I'm going to show you how to do that next week. But it involves some of the things that we're doing right here right now. Okay? So there's no point in not, you know, getting you a little bit of a heads up on some of this stuff. All right? Any other questions about this part of this? I think I'm good. Okay, so now you understand how to play around with text a little bit to do something kind of fun. I'm going to close this out, save it, no. Okay, let's get back to this for a second. So we're back to this. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to show you. I sh already showed you how I brought in a photograph, and I put the photograph into here, and I even showed you how to clip it using a clipping mask. Can you guys remember that part of this, do you think? Yeah, but I'm going to go watch it again. Yeah, it's all in the video. That's the other thing. It's all in the video. But remember one thing. The pointer's not there. <laughs> yeah, the cursor's not there. So it's going to be a little difficult because we're not seeing the cursor. Okay? So just try to use your imagination and remember that I'm moving the cursor around. Okay? All right, so the next thing I want to show you is I got these graphics here. And I'm going to see if I can find them. Let me go file open. And let me see. Where, where are my graphics? I think they're in week three elements. No, damn. Did I not bring them up? Oh, do I? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I might actually have them. Let's go back. Mm, no, that's not it. Okay, wait a second. I got an idea. Let me try something. I have a drive here that I think I might have copied them on. Give me a second to see. All right, let's see here. All right. <coughs> nope, you're not in there. Oh, boy, that's not good. Let's see. Um, I might have, wait a minute, there's one more. Let me see if it's on this one. I'm just trying to find an image. Because if not, I'm going to have to down. I'm gonna have to go download it, which is not the end of the world, but it's just easier if I could come up with them because I got them here. We three elements. Let's see. Nope. Ha! It's not it. Wait a second here. Yeah, no. Okay, so I don't have it in there. Guess what, guy? I'm going to, you know what? Maybe I'll do it with Ray Charles. I'll do it with Ray Charles. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go file new. And I'm going to open up a new file. This is just for a demonstration, so I'm not going to go to any trouble. And I'm going to come over here, find Ray Charles. 
Where is he? There's Ray Charles. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag Ray Charles and drop him. There's Ray Charles. Okay. So Ray Charles is essentially a vector, a piece of vector art. And let's zoom in a little bit to take a look at him. There he is. Okay, I don't know how well this is going to work. It's going to work, but it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Ray Charles and I'm going to tur turn Ray Charles into a piece of vector art. Okay, it actually is a piece of vector art, but it's a bit map, map because I got it off the web. Let me explain how that works. When a piece of vector art gets converted to go online, you can't put an Adobe Illustrator file up online because it's a vector piece of art. It has to be converted into a bitmap. This is probably like a JPEG or a ping or something like that, and it's been converted from a vector file. So I have the ability in this program to bring this back to being a vector piece of art. And I'm going to show you how to do that because you are going to go into the site. Let me go back to the site. And let me go back to uh, let me go back to this. Let me, I think I can get out of here I'll be doing this. Let's see. Yeah, I'll get a bunch of junk that came out. Look at that. Jeez. Awful. Let's see. There we go. All right, so let's go back and see if I can get back to the actually I want to see the images. Let's see. Okay, well, anyway, these these are your images. And and I guess what I was going to show you is that you could pick any kind of image that you want in here for this, any one of these uh, black and white bitmaps. Here's another one that's probably pretty good. I might, yeah, there it is. I actually dragged that in there and see what I got. I got that, but it's just, it's not any better. So anyway, okay, so I'm going to go back in here. This is selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up into the object menu, and I'm going to come down, and I'm going to go to image trace and make. And it's tracing it. And there, look at, actually, it came out real good. Look at that. Now, I'm going to go edit undo. And look, you see the pixelation? Does everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. But when I go object, image trace, make, and it goes in and it does the tracing. Now, I'm using the default preset here, which is actually very good because the default preset is something that works real good for this kind of piece of art. All right. So I've now converted uh, a bitmap of Ray Charles back into a piece of vector art. And to be totally honest with you, this looks really good. So I'm going to make it permanent now. So I'm going to go back to the object menu. I'm going to go to live tra or image trace. And I'm going to hit expand. And you see, look it. You see all, see all the pixels come in? This is now a piece of vector art. But it's grouped. So I'm going to go object ungroup. And now it's ungroup. And I can come and click the background here. And I can hit delete. And the background's gone. And now I have the rest of this, this art that I can use. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and I could choose Ray and I could change his color if I want. Let's make him kind of a brownish color. See if I can find a brownish color. Not having much luck with that, am I? Probably something like that. Oh, you know why? I know what the problem is. I have to go to the, uh, the, the file, document color mode. Uh, RGB and I have to come in here click on this click on this and go see it's grayscale I got to set it to RGB there and now he's brown okay in other words it's all these are RGB or I'm sorry grayscale so I have to change it to RGB and now I can come in here and I can change that so you have to change it to RGB and then I can come in here and I can make Ray a brown color I can make a suit if I want. Let's make a suit like a purpley color, uh, like that. That's great. And make his glasses a, like some kind of a gold color. Let's see what we get with that. And come in here and change that to RGB. And then maybe pick on some kind of a goldish color. Look at that. So you see, I just came out with 
a really great graphic. Now, the only problem is his teeth are brown, and, and he doesn't really have brown teeth. So I'd have to do some work to make that, to resolve that issue. But can you see what I just did here? I went in, and I found myself a bitmap. And I turned the bitmap into a um, a piece of vector art that I could use in my composition. So does does that make sense to you? The process that I just did. Any questions about any part of it while you got me here now? I'm scared. <laughs> wow. Um, so you just take your um, image. Yeah. And then you just um, once you have them in. Um, Illustrator, yeah. you just to convert the image, you just um, hit object, then image, and then trace, and it'll do it for you. Yeah, essentially, you got to make sure that you have. I'm going to go file revert. Oh, wait a minute. Um, edit, undo color, undo color. I file revert. I can't revert it. What the heck's the matter with this? I can't revert it. Edit, undo color, edit, undo eyedropper, undo color, undo color. Undo color, undo, undo clear, undo undrew, undo expand tracing, and it's going back, undo image tracing. Okay, uh, I went all the way back to this state so that I could actually walk through it one more time because this is kind of important and I want to make sure that you really do understand. So here's my bitmap. Now remember, the kind of bitmap that you're looking for is something that's very graphic in nature. This is actually a very good piece to do this with because it's very graphic in nature, okay? So this is what you're looking for. Nice contrast and uh, very thick, heavy details that, that will not be hard to deal with. So it's got to be selected first. It is a bitmap right now. Selected bitmap. Go to the object menu. Come down to live, or sorry, image trace and make. And it will do it, it'll render it, and it automatically renders it, and it renders it extremely well. As you can see here, this is actually a, a pretty darn good job, okay? So really, all you have to do at this point, now, not, not everyone is going to do this, so watch, I'm going to go edit, undo image trace, and I'm going to hide this, object, hide, selection, and let's try another one, put this and drag that in there. Okay, see, now this one is going to be different. This one might be a problem. Let's see. Object, image trace, make. There. You see how that didn't work as well? The reason that this one didn't work, control Z, is because the lines are much finer than Ray Charles. So this one here is going to be more difficult. I'm not even sure whether I can actually trace this. I'm going to try it again, and I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to look at a different setting. I'm going to try high fidelity photo first. And let's see if that helps. Not really. See what happens? It just doesn't look right. Object. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Um, let's try another setting. Let's try shades of gray. I don't know whether that's going to do it. Let's try that. Yeah, see, it doesn't help either. This is really, uh, it's really not the same kind of piece of art. I'm going to try six colors and let's see what we get with six colors yeah see it's not going to do it because number one it's it's too weak so let's go edit undo image trace so some of these you're going to find uh you're not going to be able to trace as well all right so be very careful that's why i'm saying to you it's it's something that you want to go and be very careful with so i'm going to delete that and go edit paste in place uh, or what did I do? Did I do object hide selection? Is that what it was? Show all. Yeah, that's what it is. So there's Ray. As I say, what you do with him here is object uh, image trace make. And then this one here comes up really good because he's got enough detail. And the, the black areas are strong and the white areas are strong and there's good contrast. So this is what you're looking for, not that. Does everybody understand that? You're looking for something that's powerful, something more like this than something like this with the, uh, with the little delicate lines and whatnot. Does that make sense? Everybody understand? Yep. Any questions at all about that? <clears throat> so are you supposed to do the letters on there with 
with that, are you going to overlay them somehow, or is this part of the uh, another assignment? I'm sorry, say that again. So is 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 the the graphics uh, that you're doing right now? Is that it's to be incorporated with the lettering? Your yeah, type? yeah, yeah. I'm trying to show you how if you go online and if you grab yourself a graphic that looks similar to this, how you can actually turn that piece of art into a piece of vector art. See, the problem with this is, since it's a bitmap, uh, since it's a bitmap, uh, it, it doesn't have the ability to scale up or down. But once you turn this thing into a, a piece of vector art like that, I now can make this thing as small or as large as I want, and I can put color into it and use it as part of a graphic for my, my CD cover, okay? So that is the real reason why I'm showing you how to do this, so that you have the ability to create a piece of art that you can use for your CD cover, okay? Maybe what I'll do is I'll incorporate Ray Charles into a CD cover so that you can see how that actually gets done and maybe that will help it make more sense to you do you think you think that might help well what i'm saying though is are we supposed to be doing the the type and this graphic piece together or separate you do them at separate times in other words i i gave you a way if you go and look at the type i don't know let's see i guess i i got rid of that type unfortunately i should have kept it up but if you go back to my week see see my word jazz there Jazz is one of the elements that I used, and I showed you how to make fancy type like this. I showed you how to do it with regular type using the 3D, the effect 3D, right? And using the, um, where are we at here? The, uh, uh, where is it? Is, did I put it back? Graphic styles, okay? So, in other words, you can take your type and you can put a graphic style on your type and make it look really nice. And then you can take a graphic from online like this and you can turn it into a bitmap, which you can then use in your composition. And then the only other thing that you might want to consider doing is getting yourself a picture and put the picture into it so that in the end you got something that looks sort of like this a front and a back of a CD color. That's what these graphics are here, Ray Charles. In other words, I did the same thing with these that I did with Ray Charles. See these little symbols up in the front here? Did the same thing with Ray Charles. I, I, only, uh, I only did it with a different graphic. So and that's what I'm, I'm trying to show you, a couple of options that you have to dress up an otherwise kind of a dull situation where you put some type and maybe just put some color in. All right. Does that help? Yes. Okay. Well, let me go back to my week one template, and let's try something. Let's try something a little interesting. Now that I've done this, let's try to incorporate a little bit of what I just showed you here. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to get Ray Charles. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to object ungroup, okay? And then I'm going to delete this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the whole thing, and I'm going to come up my color, and I'm going to change all of this. It's not going to let me do it at one at one time. Darn. Okay, so I have to do this a little at a time. I'm going to change this to RGB. So I'm going to come in, and I'm going to pick on all the different pieces and make sure that I set them to RGB. Okay? That's another thing that you're going to have to do with this. There's no real easy, direct way to do it, RGB. RGB. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck, but... Got to learn to do these things, RGB. And what else? the occupancy back down on the color and then trace, I mean, the occupancy down on the picture and then trace over the picture and then delete the picture afterwards. Say it again? What if you bring the occupancy down on the picture and then trace over the picture and then delete the picture afterwards? You could do that, but this is, in this particular case, this is a lot faster. And, and, and it's... Another technique that you should learn to use because this is something that's valuable as well. So you can do it that way if you want. I don't have a problem with that. But I'm just saying this is a, another technique that I think you'll find very valuable. Okay? Yes. Okay. So now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select Ray Charles. And I'm going to go edit copy. 
And then I'm going to switch back to my template. And I'm going to go edit, paste in front. And there's Ray Charles. And I'm going to move Ray Charles over like this. And I'm going to make Ray Charles bigger. I'm going to drag Ray Charles way up bigger until he really fills the screen. And I'm going to drag him down a little bit. Okay. And I might actually drag it out a little bit that way too. There we go. And let me move it over. See, what I'm doing is I'm just making use of Ray Charles since I've actually got him. There's Ray Charles. So we're going to have Ray Charles on the front of this one, okay? Now, remember what I told you about the image. You see how all this image is hanging out here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. But we don't need all this image. We just need Ray Charles on the front, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here. This is going to be locked, so I'm going to go Object Lock Selection. I've, I've locked the background color, Object Lock Selection, and I'm going to grab my rectangle tool, and I'm going to come up right on where the fold is and out in the uh, bleed area, and I'm going to drag all the way down to the bottom where the bleed area is and all the way over to the bleed area over there. So now I've created that shape in front of Ray. See it? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to select both of these. And I don't know whether I got them all. Hold on a second. There we go. Got them all. Actually, you know what? Let me do this. Uh, now, that's, that's fine. I'll do it this way. So I'm going to select both of these things. And remember I told you, object, clipping mask, make. And look. See what I got? I got just Ray's face. The rest of that just disappears. Why? Because I created a clipping mask. Okay? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So this is obviously now going to be a Ray Charles, a Ray Charles album. Now, if I wanted to, I could click on this and I could come up here and I could use my reflect tool. And I could click on the reflect tool. And I could come over here and make sure that I have the vertical orientation selected. And I could come over here and see where it says preview. I could click on preview. And you see how I've changed the direction of Ray? I have him looking in the other direction. Maybe I like Ray in that direction. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I have Ray looking in that direction. Again, just so that you understand what I'm doing I'm doing things in Adobe Illustrator that I want to show you how to do. I'm trying to make it possible for you to find a little bit more about this program than you did when you came in here. Okay? So do you kind of get where I'm going with this? This isn't this is just me. It's like playtime. Okay? It's like playtime for me. So now I got Ray and Ray looks pretty good. Now I'm thinking to myself though. I don't know whether I really like Ray being that white. Maybe what I want is, maybe I want Ray to be what's known as a ghost, okay? The, does anybody know what a ghost is or a, um, a bende? Have you ever heard of the term bende or ghost or um, a transparency? Have you heard of those terms? Yeah, anybody? Transparency. Transparency. All right, so watch. I'm going to click on Ray, and I'm going to go up to the window menu. Let me come and find the window menu. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to choose transparency. Here's the transparency palette. So I have Ray selected. I have opacity over here. And I'm going to click on the opacity. And I'm going to bring the opacity down, way down to 30%. There you go. Now that, to me, looks really good. And I might even go a little bit lighter, 20%. That I like. There's Ray. Okay? There's Ray. And Ray looks cool. That's what I want. So really what I did was I came in and I set the opacity of white, okay, which normally is set to 100%, just like that. I set the opacity down to 20%. So I get that look, and I like that look, okay? So does that make sense what I'm doing here? I'm, I'm looking at this trying to be a designer. So now what I need to do is uh, – Let's go to my final, and I have new in blue, 
and West Coast. I'm going to make two. One, one is going to say West Coast, and one is going to say New and Blue. For some strange reason, I don't know why, I just think, whoops, that's the wrong one. I just think Ray Charles should be New and Blue. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to set some text, and it's going to be N-E-W-I-N-B-L-U-E, New in Blue. And I'm going to select it. I'm going to start off by making it white, okay? And I'm going to leave it Myriad Pro, but I'm going to bring it up to a size, oh, let's try 36. It's actually not big enough yet. Let's try 60. That's probably pretty good. There we go. New and blue. And I'm going to bring this down like that. And it's probably a little bit too big. So, And I also don't want the stroke on this. I want it to reverse out. And I want it to be white. And then I'm, I'm only doing this now because I'm going to change the color and I'm going to do some stuff to it in a minute. So I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see uh, what I got. So here's Ray. This is what I got so far. This is what the front of my cover looks like. All right. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to, uh, let's zoom it out. Can you zoom out a bit? That's probably pretty good. Zoom out, zoom out a little bit more. Okay, so my guides are here. Let's see if I can show my guides. Go to the view menu, go to guides, and oh, there. I don't, I guess I don't really have any guides out. View, fit, artboard, and window. Okay, and you zoom out. There we go. All right, this will probably be all right. Let me get this up here. Oh, there we go, over like that. Okay, I'm going to bring out a couple of guides. There's a guide that goes right on the crop. I'm doing this because I want to get an idea of what the type looks like. I don't want the type to be too close to this. And I'm going to bring the guide over to here, and I'm going to bring it so that I can see. See, I don't want the type to be too close, and the type is actually getting a little close. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and the Alt key, and I'm going to bring it in just a bit, just like that. And I'm going to move it over some and try to visually center it. I want the space here and here to be about the same, like about like that. Okay? And there is my text. If I want, I've, I've got this set to Myriad Pro. I can really come in here, and I can make this any type that I want. I can go nuts with this. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this, and I'm going to maybe click on and choose uh, semi-bold. And notice that when I make it semi-bold, it makes it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to have to adjust the size of it again. And I'm going to hold down the Shift and the Alt key and bring it down to about like that, because I think what I also want to do is go to the Window menu and go to Type and go to uh, Character and... Remember what I told you, that you have kerning. Remember, this is going to be in your assessment. Kerning is the space between two characters, kerning. And tracking is sets the tracking of the selected character. So the set tracking, what you got to do is you got to come in here. Ugh, come on. All right. Come in here and select i to select the characters. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to set the tracking for all the characters. That's probably pretty good. And I'm going to now move it over and get it to where I center it. There we go. Okay, so now I have that. There's new and blue, and there's Ray. So if I wanted to at this point, I've got some text for the front, and I got Ray for the front. Again, this is sort of what you're going to do. You're then going to put together a back, and the back might have some songs on it, or it might have some other graphics on it. But I want to show you basically how to put something together, and I'm going to use the front to do this. So we got an image, nice image. You saw how to do this. I assume there's no questions about any of that. And again, you could watch the video. Now I got my text. There's a whole bunch of things that I can do. But the first, did uh, somebody want to ask me a question or say something? No, I'm good. Okay. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to go to Effect, and I'm going to go 3D, Extrude and Bevel. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to find there. I don't really like that, so I'm going to move this up. Yeah, that's, you know what the problem is. We're not seeing the extruding because the extruding is, is dark, I guess. It's not showing up. 
Let's see if I can get it to show up at all. Might not be able to. New and blue. Is it showing up? And it's not really. Yeah, I'm not seeing the extrude at all. So I'm going to. I see something. It, but I'm not seeing it. In, let's see. Plastic shading. More options. Let me try something. Let's try moving the light a bit. See if I can get something better. Um, maybe add a light. I don't know whether that's going to do it or not. Not really. It's not helping me at all. There we go. Yeah, you're not seeing it. You know why? Because of, of the black background. That's really what the problem is. So I'm going to cancel on that. All right, so I can't really use that. But I do have another trick that I can show you that you might find. It's a thing called enveloping. And you might like enveloping. Uh, so, so let me, before I uh, move into enveloping, let me explain why uh, you weren't able to see my background. I'm going to go object unlock all, and I'm going to hide this, object hide selection. All right, so now I've hidden my, I don't know what that is. Well, anyway, I don't think it's going to matter. This here, if I click on this and if I go to, um, effect 3D extrude and bevel. Let's see what happens now. Preview. There. Can you see why we weren't seeing it? Because it was black. That's why we were not seeing the extrude and bevel because it's black. It's showing it in black, so we're not really getting much of a look at it. That's Is it possible then if you change the um, stroke to a uh, white, would you be able to see Actually, it? You know what? actually cancel this you know what you might be right let's try something let's I, I might have forgotten to do that okay so I've removed that object show all let's try it and see because that might be the solution so now select it effect 3d extrude and bevel let's give it one more shot and hit preview yeah there we go in business that was very good, very good. Oh, I, I didn't spot that. I didn't, I didn't spot it. I was so busy thinking about how I was going to explain this to you that I didn't even spot the obvious. So I'm going to try to get this in a position that I like. I kind of think I want something like that. That's pretty cool, actually. Let's try to get it a little bit nicer. There we go. And maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to even come in here and let's see, more options. I'm going to see if I can come in here and... Oh, no, perspective. Here we go. That's what I want. I don't need the more options. Perspective. I'm going to see about the perspective. There we go. I like the perspective a little bit. Okay, so there is my new and blue, and I'm going to hit OK. So now I have my new and blue. Give it a second to process. There it is. And now I'm going to come in, and I'm going to apply my um, effect. Um, where is it? Which one was it? Graphic styles. There we go. And I'm going to try my, uh, is this it? Neon. Blue neon. Ooh, it knocked it right out. Wow. Isn't that something? Knocked it right out. I wonder if I can now go back in, go to the effect 3D, extrude and bevel. Why did that knock that out? Preview. Don't know why it did that. Evidently having a real hard time with this. I don't know why it didn't have trouble with the other. See, see how long it takes to render this? That's one of the real problems with this is that it, it's very labor intensive to render something like this. So what we may end up doing with this is we may end up ditching the extrude and bevel, and we may go back to my other plan, which was to show you how to do an envelope, which I think you'll also like. It's also a, a neat way to deal with this. So maybe if you're going to do the uh, 3D extrude and bevel, you might be careful with the uh, application of, a, of an effect. There you go. So actually, it did, it did try to work, and it's not bad. It's not too bad, okay? So there you go. If you want to do that, you could give it a shot, and it will work. Now, it's, see, every time you move it now, it's going to render. So it's going to take a minute. I'm just moving it down a little bit to get it in frame, so to speak. But you can see it works, right? And you can get a pretty nice-looking front cover this way. Don't you think? Does anybody not like that? 
Looks great. I think it's cool. So I'm going to let this thing render. It'll take another minute to render. And then what I'm going to do is, see, it really, it's really the processing involved in this is gets a little bit big. So what you might want to do is you might want to build the entire front and back before you apply these effects. You might want to wait till the very end before you apply these effects, okay? Kind of important that you think about that. Let's see what we get. There we go. That ain't bad. Okay, so there you go. You, you now have new and blue. And um, again, if I click on this, and if I come over to my appearance palette, let's see if it's open. Appearance is closed. There's the appearance palette. If I bring out the appearance palette, okay, I can literally come in here and I can hide my, see, it's, it's going to render it. Wow. I'm going to get rid of this because this is just too much work for this uh, to process. So I'm gonna get rid of this in a minute. But you saw it, it can be done, uh, and I would do it at the very end. I'm gonna show you uh, another thing, that, another technique that you can use to create some interesting text effects that I want you to play with as well. Give it a second. All right, it's back, okay. So I'm gonna go edit. Undo appearance palette. Yeah, sorry about this. It's it really takes a bit to render. Wow. Anybody, while we're waiting for this to render, does anybody got anything they want to ask me about any of this? Does anybody have anything that they need to ask? I me? have one question. Yeah, go right ahead. So I, it might it might be kind of a corny thing, but um, I was thinking if uh, you wanted to add like a, a gradients to the words um, or to the lettering, how, how do, you, do you go about selecting the, um, the word? So you can add the um, the gradients to the word, like say um, vertically or horizontally. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me back out. Um, let me back out of this render and let me get this uh, 3D effect off of here because that's what's causing all this trouble at this point. Let me get that out, and then what I will do is I will show you uh, how to put gradient into your text as well. So I'll show you in a minute how to put gradient into your text. And I will also show you the 3D, um, uh, I'm sorry, the um, envelope, uh, the envelope distortion. So I'll show you the envelope distortion and I'll show you how to put gradients into your text. But I just have to get out of this 3D uh, environment and I might have to hit this one more time to do that. So yeah, but I will definitely show that in a second. Let's go edit. Oh, here we go. Now we're going to get, okay, there we go. So it's gone. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and this is, we're not going to have this much trouble anymore because this is no longer a, um, a 3D. This is just a, um, a graphic style. That's all this is. It's just a graphic style. And if I want, I can get rid of the graphic style, which I'll do in a minute. Let me just show you enveloping because this is something really cool as well. So now I have this new and blue selected. That's the first thing. The text has to be selected. The object has to be selected. So I'm going to go up to the object menu and I'm going to come in and I'm going to go envelope distort. Okay. So it's object, envelope distort, make with warp. And I get the warp options dialog box. There it is. Okay. Now the different styles of warps that we have, we have the arc, the upper arc, the lower arc, the arch, the bulge, the shell lower, the shell upper, the flag, the wave, the fish, the rays, fisheye, inflate, squeeze, and twist. Now, some of these things work really good with text. Some of them don't work so much with text. The bottom line is I want you to come in and I want you to play with this a little bit when you get a chance. Do it with text. I happen to like the arch, but I don't think I want the arch here. I think I want what's called a flag here. So I'm going to set the style to flag, okay? Now, we have the bend and distortion methods. Uh, we can go hor horizontal or vertical. Horizontal is the default. 
Now, I've got this thing set on its default, which is 50%. I'm going to hit preview so that you can see what this text does. So I hit preview. There is your flag. See how that creates that great kind of flagging effect? I can make this thing a greater flag, or I can make it a lesser flag. Or I can go in the other direction, where I have it go like that. So it really comes down to what you like. I kind of like that look with this, so I'm going to hit OK. And now I have my text, and I have Ray, and I have some really good looking action if you really want to know the truth. I mean, you've got Ray looking in this direction, and you got this text rolling across his forehead like that. This thing starts to look really nice, and I haven't done that much work to make it happen. You see what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Does this throw you all off, or are you okay? I, that that yeah sounded a little bit like oh my god. <laughs> is this a lot? Is this like it? It is a little bit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Well, remember the video is being recorded, so you can go back yes. and watch it again. So anyway, it's here's the deal. Again and again. What? Again and again. Again and, then and again. again. <laughs> well, you know, it's. Uh, Believe me when I tell you, it, it's you'll get it. And when you get it, you're going to love it because there's so many things that you could do with this stuff. It's so simple. I mean, it really is. This is what this program does better than any other program is it gives you the ability to create all these really great things. So I, I, I know that it's not the easiest thing to do, but it is something that I, I highly recommend that you try. You give it a shot and play with it a little bit. Now, the question was asked of me. How do we get this thing to um, turn into a gradient? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go edit, undo, move, edit, undo, make envelope. And then I'm going to see if I can make that default black and white, which I did. And I'm going to remove the stroke on that. Okay, so I've actually gone back and I've removed everything. And my text now is nothing but a white fill. That's it. Everything's been removed. It's a white fill. Now, what you wanted was a gradient. So there's a gradient right there. And if I click, I place the gradient in. And there is my gradient. And there is my gradient palette, okay, or panel. Um, for those of you who have, have the person who, I don't know who asked me the question about the gradient, have you done anything with the gradient at all yet? Oh, yeah. No, I have. Uh, when it comes to the oh, – this is Jeff, by the way. Um, yeah. When it comes to, uh, like, uh, the, the, the text, yeah. for some reason when I've tried it in the past, it, um, it also makes a gradient in a box behind the, the text as well. So it doesn't like – it wasn't just um, focusing on the individual letters in the text. Did hmm. you have something selected besides the text? Um. Because if you had a box selected at the same time the text is selected, of course, it will fill the box as well. But here, I just got the text selected, and you can see my gradient is just in the text. There's no box or anything involved in it. And Yeah, that's, that's right. So, I mean, I don't know. It's, you know, uh, it, I, I can't say what happened with you because I can't really see. But let me try to give you an idea of what you can do now that we have a gradient in here. So we have different types of gradient. We have here either a linear gradient, which is what we have on here now, or we have this radial. That's the radial. Uh, radial's kind of interesting, but I don't know. You know, in this particular case, I'm not that mad about it. So I think I'm going to go back to the linear. So I got the linear. That is your choices here. The next choice that you have is the angle. The angle is very cool because what you can do with the angle is you can drop this down and you can choose whatever angle you want. What I think I want is I think I want the darker color, the black, to be towards the bottom of the letters and I want the lighter to be at the top. Now I think if I choose 90, remember there's 90 and there's negative 90. So if I choose 90, okay, so I'm wrong. It goes to the top. That's not what I want. I want negative 90. So I'm going to click negative 90, and now I have my dark down by ray. And if I want, I can come over here and I can control the amount of either the darkness 
or lightness that I have in my gradient by just using that little diamond slider right there. See how I've made that much brighter? I've yeah. made it more dark, more dark, and I can make it very dark towards the bottom by just using that slider. And what you're seeing here is it's showing you the location of that, of that little divider. So really, this is not too difficult to deal with either. It's just a matter of, of choosing the colors. Now, new and blue. Maybe what I want to do here is I don't want this to be black. Maybe I want this to be in blue. So if I double click on this, I can come over here. Oh, and by the way, this thing here is still set to be grayscale. I'll come in and I'll choose RGB. And now I can come in and I can drag this over and I can make that. And now it says new and blue. And there we have new and blue. That, and looks, pretty, can, that looks pretty hot. Can you actually um, select uh, just individual um, words uh, instead of doing all on the, the new and blue? Could well, you let's try it and see what happens. I'm going to select one of the words. Let's try, try selecting the word new. And let's open up the gradient window. Gradient. And let's see if I can get, no, it's not, well, oh, maybe. Let's try making it black. Let's try making just that one. Whoops. It's not happy about it. Let's see if it works. I'm not sure it'll work, but make it black and see if it works. There, well, yeah, it didn't really, doesn't seem to like that very much. So, control Z. I don't think we can actually do that. See if I there we go. But I know what we can do is this. Now, assuming that I know that this is going to say new and blue, and I know I'm not going to have to change this. This is live text. You can always tell that you have live text because live text you have the the underline underneath this, right? You see it? Yep. Yep. So what I'm going to do with this text now is I'm going to take this text and I'm going to turn it into a graphic shape, and I'm going to do that by with it selected, I'm going to come up to the type menu and I'm going to create outlines. And what I've done basically is I've taken this text and it is no longer live editable text. They're basically just graphic shapes. So I'm going to come in here, object, ungroup, okay? And actually, when I do that, wow, that's really, all right, hold on, let me get this. Let me see if I can get that. And object, lock, selection. Yeah, I've lost my gradient when I did that. Let's see if I can get it back. Wow, no, that's not that's what I want cool. at all. It looks good. <laughs> object. It wouldn't look good when I let it go. Lock selection. <laughs> okay, now let's try it again. There we go. Now let's try putting that in. There we go. Okay, now notice this. This is I want to show you. Look what happens. Because each one of these are individual uh, elements. Do you see how each one of them puts the gradient in? And it looks very funny. Yeah, see it? Good. Yep. Okay. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to select all of these guys. And I'm going to have to come in here. And I'm going to have to set this to negative 90. And then when I, as soon as I set it to negative 90, it comes back and it works correctly. Wow. So now I got this. And this looks pretty good. Now, what you're saying is you'd like to see this be a different color. So now that I've done that, I can select just those three, wow. come in here and click on that, and I can make that black, and now that will work. See? So there you go. So actually, you can do that. So you'd have, to, you have to create an outline first, and then it, it, it's that's no right. live text. It, 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 I, I think what happens is there's too much going on when it's live text. Because they're, because they're connected, it, wants to, it doesn't quite know how to resolve the issue. But once you turn this into graphic shapes, then these are individual graphic shapes, and the program does understand. I'm going to go Control-Z because I don't really like the look of that. And I'm going to come back and do this to 90 again because I like the look of that. Okay, so there you go. So that, that is the, the answer for that. Object, group it. I'm grouping this. So now I'm going to come back in and go uh, select it. Notice when I group it, it all selects as one piece. Object, envelope distort, make with warp. 
and I'm going to notice another thing. This is something else I want to point out to you. Uh, because the last thing that I used was flag, and I used that setting right there, you notice that it's kept those settings. It, it figures that maybe I might want to come back and use this again. So it's kept my settings. When I hit preview, there we go. Hit OK. And now I've got that part back. So now I've got new and blue, and I got Ray Charles, and I got a pretty nice looking cover. So this is what you want to do for your front cover. Uh, for the back cover, I'm going to come to the final. The back cover, basically, what you're going to do is um, come up with something for the back. Again, it can be just graphics. You might want to repeat the name on the back. One thing that's very important, you're going to want to put the um, barcode on the back. Now, the barcode actually is a very simple thing to do. Let me go back to here. Okay, the barcode is very simple. Because all you're going to do to put the barcode is you're going to go file, place, and you're going to look for, come on, there we go. There's my barcode right there. Barcode, and hit place, and hit OK. And there's my barcode, and I bring my barcode over, and I can put the barcode anywhere that I want. That's it. Now, the barcode really has to be on the back. I don't know what you're going to do with the rest of the back. Totally up to you. Maybe you want to go in and look up. If you were going to do Ray Charles, uh, you would come in here and you would put um, uh, hits. You'd find some hits, Ray Charles hits, and maybe you'd put the hits that are on the album. Um, you know, that's probably a way to go with it. I don't really have any Ray Charles hits. I do have some hits on this other one here. Let's see what this looks like. I'm going to click on it and go edit copy. And let's bring this in and let's go edit paste and there it is let's bring it over here and even though this isn't Ray Charles hits now you're beginning to see what a proper back would look like okay something along the lines of this where you just get come up with some text this is text for the album that I was working with and obviously it isn't a Ray Charles but again basic text on the back a barcode on the back you know maybe you know then it's just a matter of placing it and then, of course, what you might want to also do is come in here and uh, notice that I got this little logo here. I'm going to go edit copy, and I'm going to go to my there, and I'm going to go edit paste, and I'm going to paste that in here so we know that this is a jazz album. We could do that. And then, of course, if we want, we could actually get all these elements and move all these elements down. Maybe that's too far down. That's probably pretty good. Let me move this over just a bit. Again, I'm just playing with this back to give you an idea of what the back might be like. And then maybe I'll bring this down a little bit like that. And then what I can do is this, click on this, edit copy, edit paste in place, and then hold down the, the shift key and hit the left arrow and left arrow that on to the back and maybe just repeat the name of the album on the back possibility you know again I'm not being incredibly not being incredibly um, original with this but I think you're getting the idea then maybe what I would do is hold down the shift and the alt key and make this a little bit smaller that's probably pretty good and then now I have essentially a back and I probably would make this thing a little bit smaller as well. I think it's probably a little bit too big. Control Alt and drag that down like about like that. That's probably better. There you go. And now I got a front and a back of a of a CD cover, right? What do you guys think? Can it's you do? Awesome. Can you do that? That's the question. You guys think you could do that? I hope yeah, so. With a little work. <laughs> Well, I mean, I was stumbling around with it a little bit. It took me, I mean, it's now 8.51. It took me uh, a good hour to go through this. And, uh, you know, you saw me. I was bumbling and stumbling a little bit, right? I mean, that's the way it is. You know, you you got to figure these things out. And this was something, I mean, I didn't make a Ray Charles album. 
I just did this to show you how to do it because I was trying to show you how to use some of the elements that, that I was showing you in my demonstrations. So, you know, again, I was, I was looking to show you how to go about doing this so that uh, the things that I showed you, working with this element Ray Charles that I did, makes sense. And working with the type makes sense. So I tried to do things that would do that for you, okay? So there you go. That's it. Uh, I'm done. I, that's basically what you want. You want, just remember that your front is on the right and your back is on the left. And the front should have the artist or whatever and it should have the name. And there are two. One is called, let's go back to the, let's go back to this one. One is called West Coast Jazz, and the other is New and Blue. Now, I added the word jazz down here, but it's really new and blue. Uh, so, you know, you can, you can use the word jazz, new and blue jazz, if you want. West Coast Jazz, if you want. Notice that what I did here was I created some background graphics. This is a very plain front. This one here, I took a bitmap, a photograph of a very jazzy scene, and I dropped that in there. This one doesn't have um, copy on the back. This has just some more graphics on the back. This has copy on the back, which shows the hits that are on the, uh, on the CD. It's up to you to decide. I do want to see you use the barcode because the barcode is a necessary element. So that's it. I mean, I don't really have all that much to show you. Uh, I, final questions? And I just go have ahead. one. Oh, um, I, the only question that I have right now is uh, I haven't opened up the, um, the uh, zip that you gave us. Yep. But are the, um, are the uh, bleed lines and the... Um, the margin line is going to be uh, in that as well in our yeah. Uh, template. Yeah, it should look it should look very much like the what when I started with this one right here. Okay, it should let me let me do let me see if I can do something here to show you what it'll look like. Yeah, I'll hide the layout. Okay, view, bit, zoom out, Let's zoom out. There we go. It should look very much like. Oh wait a minute, there's one more thing. Yeah, the there. Call out. It should very much look. It should very much look like that. Okay. Should look very much like this, and and this is what this is what you need to know. This forget about this. This thing here. Oh, let me get over here. Forget about this. This call out. Uh, wrong one. This call out is no good. Okay. This these call outs are good. Outside front covers on your right. Outside back covers on your left. So this one is going to be new and blue, and the other one is um, what is it? Um, I can't think. What was the other one. Uh, West Coast. So West Coast Jazz would be one, New and Blue with the other. And you're going to give me two variations, and you're going to use the barcode on, on the back of both. That's it. And, and from that point on, uh, I gave you the sites where you can go to find some images. If you want to go beyond those sites, if you want to go look for images somewhere else, feel free to do so. But just remember that you might want to use a bitmap for the cover, some interesting graphic that looks real jazzy. Uh, you might want to use a graphic like I did with Ray Charles here, okay? I mean, it's, it's really up to you. If, if you came back with something similar to this, I wouldn't have a problem with it, okay? I mean, I don't want you to copy me exactly, but again, this is very much like what I'm looking for, okay? So there you go. That's it. Can I say one thing? Yeah, please. Okay, I tried to turn mine in today, and um, I sent I saved it as a point AI thing, yeah. and it wouldn't let me submit it. So just so you guys know, like when you put save as, there's a thing where you can change it to PDF, and that's the only way it'll let you submit it. Submit it as a PDF. But let me tell you something. This is a very important thing. Um, let me do something here to show you. I'm going to drag that bitmap in there. Okay, so there's the bitmap. Object. Arrange. Bring the front. This is very important. Oh, come on. What's the deal with this? What's the deal with this? Oh, you know what? I bet it's on the layer. It is. I want it in the long layer. Bring it up. There we go. Okay. This is very important. So you see my little bitmap in here? I'm going to go to the Windows menu, and I'm going to come over here to the Links panel. Now, take a look. I got two things. I got this barcode dot here, AI, and I have this Jazz JPEG right there. There's no little graphics over there. You see that? No little graphics. Now, let me explain why I'm going to the trouble of this. The window menu, the links panel. This, whenever you bring graphics into 
a Adobe Illustrator file, they come in linked. And the problem with links is that when you send it to me, the links don't come along unless you embed them. And you embed them using this panel. So right now I have that jazz picture right there, jazz JPEG. I'm going to click it and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to embed the image. You see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Embed the image. You see the little graphic? Cool. Yep. That graphic tells me now that this is embedded. I'm going to do the same thing with barcode. Embed the image. And it's embedded, believe me. So now I have that embedded and that's embedded. If you save this as PDF and send it to me, because you've embedded this image, I can now open that JPEG, or I'm sorry, that PDF. I can open that in Adobe Illustrator, and because this, this JPEG is embedded, it will now open up and I will see your whole image. So it's very important that if you use bitmaps, make sure that you send it to me. Make sure that you embed them first, and you use the link palette, and you come here, and you choose embed the image, just like you saw me do. Any Can questions? You, uh, huh? Yeah, I, I tried to do that last time, and um, well, I think on the first assignment. Yeah. And um, I could not get my my Mac to work like that. I, when I went to try to embed, it was it was um, I couldn't even click on anything. It was like, um, you know, you can't. I couldn't highlight it and click on it. It wouldn't let me. Uh, you should be able to click it like that. Okay. Well, watch. Okay, when I pulled it on from watch, the, the watch, watch this layer. If I okay. click on that, you see that layer. Yes. Okay. I can also do it by clicking there. Now, this isn't going to embed again because it's already embedded. So, you see, that's no longer available. So, you're looking for that graphic there. That graphic has to be there for it to be embedded. It should look exactly the same in a Mac and in a PC. Okay. So, either click on the image like that, and if you don't see the graphic, go embed it. Or click on the layer and then go embed image. And one way or the other, you should be able to embed that image. Okay. You know, when I tried it last time, I, I wasn't doing it this way. I was doing from the, um, the uh, menu bar up on top. There you go. So okay. you got to remember that you're going to go to the window menu. This is critical. So I just want to make sure you get this. Links panel. And then you're going to select the element that you have that you want to embed, and you're going to embed the image. Really important that you do that. All right? Perfect. Any other questions? I am complete. I am done. I am going to stop sharing this and I'm going to stop